Okay, hi everyone. Um, so welcome to today's section, and I have the intelligent Oluwafumi here, and she'll be sharing tips on how to win the Irish AIDS scholarship, which is a recipient of. Um, so before she starts, like how are you enjoying Ireland? Like, let me know. Ireland is nice, quite warm. I think it's a nice. The people are warm. It's cold, but there's it's not only once so if you're looking for a place that the cold is variable i think it's it's a good place and yeah this place is the tech hub too so oh it's tech the, hub wow that's great this is the headquarter of facebook twitter tiktok instagram too yeah and so that means there are a lot of opportunities definitely in ireland I, I, I can see why you went for Ireland because I know you had more than one scholarship, like you had tuning and then the Irish, and then you ran for the Ireland one. So does the Ireland one mandate you to go back home? Like, did they mandate you to go back? They actually mandate you to go back home. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, so someone asked me to ask you this question that since you're going to, I think, Dublin University, right? College Dublin. Yeah, Dublin College. So the person is like, how competitive is it? Because the person is thinking of applying, but is it easy? What do you think of the admission process? Because it's one of the top schools, yeah. I think um between UCD and Trinity, there's the battle of who is number one, who is number two. So if you're applying to, and UCD is top 100 in the world, if I'm right. So you're applying to a top school that you can compete with anyone anywhere and say that you attended, you attended the top one percent um school in the whole world so it's quite competitive to get here but competition is also relative it depends on the course you are studying depends on your experiences your cdp and all that so if you want to apply and you have all your things put together just just put in your best foot and then apply i always tell people that i graduated with a tutu and i i got into ucd i got into many top schools all around the world so i just apply you know <laughs> okay i'm um, asking but is there like something outstanding they should do different you know some people they don't know how to like prepare or structure their alcohol the best foot forward or oh, depending you know it's related in, in terms of depending on what course you are trying to study if you're in if you're in the humanitarian sector for example you would like to show all your experiences in leading teams, volunteering, your emotional intelligence skills, the skills you've learned, the skills that you want to learn while also applying for the master's in whatever you want to study. If you want to take a medical degree, for example, you have to show a connection between why um, why you want to study what you, have, you want to study, like what sports your interest and the connection um, in relation to what your career plans are. So I, mean, I always tell people to put their, their best forward. It's always dependent on what exactly you want to study. What are your career plans? What do they look like? And what, um, what exactly do you want to benefit from studying the master's? You know, I remember when I wrote my, um, many of the applications that I wrote, then I always write why um, the dissertation that I would like to do. Of course, now I have changed what my dissertation is going to be because I know better like um there's something about studying it just opens it opens you up to so many things you see so many things and but you know the fact that I had an idea of what I wanted to do for my dissertation that I made my application quite distinct okay thank you for sharing so now let's go to the scholarship like you know we're having a discussion and then you're like is in various stages like you know better, I, I never applied to the Irish scholarship because I see it's so competitive and stressful. So how? So just tell us more about the scholarship. Okay, so um, there are so many. There are quite a number of scholarships from Ireland. There's the Ireland Government Scholarship, and there's the Irish Aid Scholarship. I am going to focus on the Irish Aid Scholarship. The Irish Aid Scholarship is in various countries. I know they are in Uganda. They sponsor people from Uganda, Tanzania, Vietnam, um, Nigeria, Syria, Lone, ah, Liberia, am I sure? So, I'm sure of South Sudan, and a host of other countries like that, Uganda. They sponsor people from 
so many countries like that. But in sometimes it is a different name in that country. In Nigeria, it's called the Roger Casement Fellowship. And that's because they only fund specific human rights courses in Nigeria. So you cannot just take any course. You cannot just go to any school. They have a list of courses a list of courses that they wanted to choose from. They also have a list of schools that they want you to go to. So if you check those courses and you don't see anything that you like there, then you are not fit to study, to take that um scholarship from Nigeria. So it's, it's called the Roger Casement Scholarship in Nigeria. And I think it, it is honor Roger Casement. He was an Imara defender in Nigeria. He worked in Calabar and some states before he died. In some other countries too, it is called something else scholarship. And in some countries, it's just called Irish Aid Scholarship. But when we all get here to Nigeria, when we get here, when we are all here in Ireland, we are all um, Ireland fellows. I know it's a lot of name. Even me, it took me a while to get used to it. We are all Ireland fellows studying under the Irish Aid um, Fellowship. But in Nigeria, they would refer to me as a Roger Casement um, fellow. So um, it's quite, um, there are quite a number of processes for the application. In Nigeria, they typically release, um, release it around, uh, I think it's around June, July, when they send their final offers. It's around June, July, that's when they release the application. The application actually doesn't stay out for long, like three weeks, one month. So it's not something that you see rolling out every time. And then um, it is in different stages. So they release the first stage around June, July, I think, when they release it. It has, um, it's like an ask, it, it's a sheet that has um about three questions, just 100, 100 words each, not more than 100 words. And um. The, the 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 three questions I answered during my year, I don't know if it's still going to be the same thing, but during my time, the three questions that I answered was how the specific how the specific programs of study in Ireland, which you have chosen, will assist in your career aspiration. And then um, I think it was just um oh sorry, it was just one question, okay, but you have it's been a while, so I'm trying to. It was just one question, but you, ha you have to answer how in 200 words, in 250 words, it was just one question, but you have to answer how the specific programs of studies, study in Ireland, which you have chosen would assist in your career aspirations, how they would help you work towards achieving your country, your country's national SDG goals, and how you would propose to develop, develop links between your country and Ireland. Now, so you are expected to demonstrate some knowledge of Ireland and Irish higher education. So you're supposed to answer those three things in 250 words. So you're supposed to demonstrate, you're supposed to tell them why the specific um, program you choose is important to you and how it will help you with your career aspirations, how it will help you achieve your country's specific sustainable development goals. By now, I think everyone should know what sustainable development goals are and how you would propose to develop links between your country and, your country and Ireland. So for me, it's also 150 words. So you cannot actually say much, but you have to, it's, it's a very tricky thing. You, have, you also have to say, you know, so that they can consider you for the next, for the next um, application. So for me, I divided the questions into three single, into three different questions and wrote everything I wanted to write under. So I answered the first one, how the, the program would assist me in my, for my career. The second one, how it would help me work towards achieving my country's national SDG goal. And then um, how I would propose partnership between my country and Ireland. So um, depending on where you are coming from, but in Nigeria, um, remember that they are funding you because you, you, you are developing you want to work towards um, developing human rights in Nigeria. So whatever question you're answering, you have to ensure that they see your passion for human rights and that 
anything that you want to do is going to be beneficial to Nigeria in terms of um human rights development in Nigeria. So I, I think that for me, I told them like I gave them an example of um when I come back to Nigeria that this is um the first place I would like to work with. People talk about um, so many places, some people say Ministry of um, Education, some say UN Women, some say they, they want to teach. You know, depending on your passion, you, I, uh, for me, I just said, oh, this is the place I would like to work. And this is because by working in this particular place, I would be able to use my experiences, my skills, and my knowledge in my master's to facilitate um, human rights, um, to facilitate and ensure that people have access to their human rights in Nigeria. So that was how I answered that question, that everything I have learned in my master's and my stay in Dublin and in Ireland in general, that I'm going to use it to ensure that um, human rights is centered in Nigeria. So that was how I answered that first question. There are so many ways to answer it. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer, but you just have to be able to show that you know what you are doing and you know what you're saying. So um, so they also said that how they help you work towards achieving your country's national national SDG goals. So we all have different sustainable development goals that we are um passionate about. For me, I'm passionate about um goal one, which is ending poverty, goal five, gender equality, goal four, access to quality education. So I spoke about all these things and I, I spoke about how these courses are going to strengthen my critical analysis skills, my research skills, and what my dissertation is going to be on. So, you know, I already, at that time, I thought I knew what my dissertation is going to be on. So I, I said what my dissertation is going to be on and that when I'm done, that this dissertation is going to be used by the government, um, policy officials, state, civil society, to um, properly design solution to gender inequality, gender inequality that's going to ensure that um, women are able to live freely in Nigeria. Of course, that's not my dissertation anymore, but that was what I thought I was going to do that time. And it helped me, you know, just, it just sort of feels that this person knows what they are doing, they have a goal and all that. You don't always have all the right answers when you are going for your master's. Well. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, the same thing. Like also, when I was applying for Commonwealth, like the same thing. Like this is what I'm, this is definitely totally different. I think they know that these things will change, but they just want to know who you are at that stage. So whatever you decide to research on might really be helpful. But then I want to ask you a question because you said you were passionate about three SDGs because most time people think that if they're passionate in more than one SDG, it's difficult to like tie because, you know, one SDG alone is a lot of work and problem. Now you're not combining three. So how can you like merge the three? So it's not as if you're looking like someone who is everywhere doing a lot of things, but yeah. <laughs> Most world problems are interrelated. Everything works together. I spoke about ending poverty, access to education, and gender inequality. Why don't girls go to school? Poverty, one. Two, because many people believe that, some, some families believe that girls should not have access to education because they are going to be wives. That means that even if um, there's funding for education, there are still some people who will not let their girls go to school because of their cultural beliefs, right? So all these things are intertwined and how you need to be able to do is to show how all these things connect. No goal, you, um, people solving the problem of gender equality, gender inequality have to partner with people providing access to education uh, and also people who are solving um, the poverty problem. Because we, we also have many girls who want to go to school, but, but their parents cannot afford their school fee or uniforms or issues like that, okay? And there are some families too that they are very poor. That's why people don't go to school. And when they are finally able to raise money, they feel like, okay, we have five children, three boys and one girl and two girls. Rather than say, okay, um, the girl is the first one, let her go to school, she is the eldest. They, they might shift that funding to the third born, who is a boy, because they believe that the boy, it is going to be more beneficial for the boys to have an education. So all these problems are interrelated. 
And what we need to do is to show how connected these problems are. You cannot talk about one SDG goal in isolation without mentioning without mentioning other problem. Period poverty, you know, it's an human rights issue. Human rights issue. Many girls, many families cannot afford but but and it boils down to gender inequality, poverty, you know, and a bit of healthcare too. Thanks, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The third question was how do you um want to develop links between Ireland and um Ireland and Nigeria or Ireland and your country, whatever country you are applying for. You know, you, you can just speak about the uniqueness of your country and Ireland and what you hope to do. Okay. I for me, I think I mentioned something about facilitating exchange programs, you know, so that people can learn about current practices in human rights here in Ireland and people from Ireland to have a lot to learn from us in Nigeria. That people um, from Ireland too can um organize, can can learn and experience um Nigeria too. Although I have not been able to do that, but the fact that I have not been able to do that now does not mean that I cannot do that in two years or in three years. So and many schools have exchange programs schools with people come from South America, from, from the US, from from Asia, but I, I have not seen many African schools who have that kind of thing yet. So that was what I said. And in a way, I know that was a lot of questions, but I did find a way to answer them in 250 words. And if I can, anybody can do it. <laughs> so that's, that's the first stage. And then I think- I'm they got just to like cut it there. Did you use like the star approach? You know, when they say... Yeah, I always use the star approach, but I'm not exactly sure I did it here because this was so short. This was me answering three questions in... This was me answering three questions in um, in 250 words. So I wasn't really able to go from situation, task, passion, and results because I did not have a lot of words to define the problem. But in my next essay, I did use the STAR approach. Oh, okay, so the first question is one question that has like three parts. Yeah. Okay, so you just did like a summary of everything together. Because you have just 250 words mm -hmm. to answer. Okay, all right. So you can go to the next section. So wait, the, the next section phase is when you submit this one, so they now give you feedback to say, oh, you uh, cannot yeah. proceed to the second stage month in nigeria they go back to us in a month i don't know how many more how, how, um, how long it took in other countries but in nigeria it was one month so they get back to you and they say oh you have <laughs> excuse me sorry they tell you that you have been um congratulations you have been selected for stage two of the advertisement da, 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 da. Some people would re receive a rejection mail at, mail at that point because not everyone is going to um get to stage two. So that that was it, stage one. And also, there are some things that you need to actually apply for the Irish fellowship. You need a transcript. You need your transcript. You need an international passport before you can apply for the transcripts. You need your undergraduate degree you need to have it so you might also need your IELTS um if you have it good if you don't have it before you write your um stage three before you get to stage three when they invite you for the interview you have to write your IELTS so is it like it's mandatory you can't say oh give me a waiver because I, I, I know like Nigeria we speak English or something so you must do the IELTS why they ask for it they're not asking for you for you to get the visa you need your IELTS yes okay visa um process you need to write IELTS yes so but during my time it was the COVID year and we it was the COVID year so you know IELTS yes, many centers were not open and all that so we did we wrote Duolingo instead of IELTS yes. and one thing about the embassy is that IELTS will even go whatever they ask you to write. If you don't have it, they would pay for you to write it. 
Okay, that's good then if they're paying for you to have because sometimes why some people don't apply for this thing, they're like, I don't have the money to pay application <laughs> fee to pay for English test. You write it and they will refund you. Okay. you your money. But do you pay application fee to apply for the university? They will pay for it. That is only if you are successful with the scholarship, right? Yeah, so I think it's the <laughs> And we are going to get to the stage of, or we have not gotten to our yet. Okay. We are still, we have not gotten to stage two. We just want to talk about stage two stage right two. now. Okay. Before you jump to stage two, because you know, does it matter what you study for your undergrad? Must it align to what you want to do for your masters? Because I know people like to switch fields sometimes. Depends on the school. Okay. The embassy doesn't care about what you had for your undergrad. What they care about is that you they ask you, they tell you in the application process that you should make sure you familiarize yourself with what the school you're applying to is asking. So you have to be sure that your school accepts your undergraduate degree, that they are cool with your um with your grades too. For me, I remember that um when I was when I was checking the schools, um a lot of them were writing things like they typically accept two one. But that um they might consider you if you if you're able to wow them. I mean, I was very confident that I'm going to be able to wow them. So I just chose all of them. So it's not dependent on the embassy or whoever is um whoever is reading your application. It is dependent on the school. The school, some schools we say that okay, you can't switch from from um an engineering background to tech. You know, some will say they don't mind. It depends on the school. It depends on the school you're applying to. Okay, all right, no process. So you can proceed to step two. Okay, so um, for the step two, there's also um a number of um. There's a number of things to, to there's a number of questions to answer in the stage two. They ask you questions like um, what are your key achievements and is that roles in your in your workplace so this is where i use star, uh, star approach um i think they are big on where you worked yourself like this is where i worked and this was the role i played because the embassy believes that um your your school your workplace should permit you to go and study uh, so that when you come back you can resume at your workplace if you wish to continue there okay so um what are your key achievements and leadership roles in your workplace me i have always work, worked in the humanitarian sector so all my experiences are they're aligned and they're award. so i don't have an outline i don't have a different experience that is not humanitarian in, in nature but some people just spoke about how they led their team to do this and do that. So for me, I spoke about my role as I did have my own, I do have my own nonprofit and I also worked with various other nonprofits. So I shared a scenario where I was program coordinator for a, pro a program and I, I told them that I led so, so number of volunteers and the projects that we worked on, you can talk about maybe your project was to end forced marriage, it was to end education inequality. It was to um to support prisoners. I I know a fellow who works with supporting prisoners and ensuring that they, they you know they have fair trials and all that. You can say this was your specific role. And this now after this place is a good place to give a very short. You have just two hundred words. A very short insight to like the prison situation in Nigeria. You can say okay statistics from so, so shows that um you have over 1000 um prisoners in, in um you have over 1000 prisoners in so so place and um they have not gone through trial and all that this is their plight they don't have food they cannot see their family and they cannot see people you know just talk about whatever you are most passionate about for me i spoke about how I worked in a certain community and so some number of girls were forced into marriage and then every day there's always a case of child and forced marriage. So I spoke about how I led, um, I led about, I led over 20 volunteers and 
what I did as leader was to designate roles for for um for I mean designate work for everyone. Like, okay, this is what you are doing. This is your role. This is your place, and this is my own role too as the team lead. And I also showed, I also demonstrated in my essay that my style of leadership is servant leadership, where I am not just a leader by name, but I am I am leading and also serving everybody. I spoke about how at the end of the project, before uh, when we started the project, we received funding from people, we received support. And with this funding, we carried out this project. After carrying out this project, I, I demonstrated that um, there was um, a reduction in the total number of um, child marriage in that community. If you have links to your work, I did put links to my work in in um, my essay. I think it's a, you don't know if they will click on it or not, but it just gives the legitimacy to your work if you can just put links to what you've done. And if you don't have links, that's fine. So just be able to demonstrate strongly that this is what we did. So I told them that, okay, there was a reduction in the cases of child and forced marriage, and, you know, and that um, because of my leadership, this was able to happen. So that was how I answered that question. You can also add, for every question, actually, as, as long as it is, for every question, I used to put like three scenarios. So if you are able to write two, three scenarios, good. It shows you in different light, in, in different places that you've worked. If it's only one scenario that you have, fine. But I, I think that you can do one or more. You can do, you can do two or more. But just know, just know, do not overdo it. Do not work down your work. Just, just, just find this balance. You would know. You will just know it. And um, uh, okay. okay, did you want to ask another question? Yeah, so just like you said, so do you think like quantity or quality? Because some people want to like give so much detail to say, also oh, today I spoke to this. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, like you said, to show that you actually did this project, you have to specifically to say, okay, I worked in community A. Maybe I mentored 5,000 people. Where did this thing happen? Or you should just write, blah, 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 blah. you have 1,000 experience. You want to put your 1,000 experience in your essay. So for the quantity and quality debate, this is my own definition of quantity. Eh? Quantity. Many people used to assume that quantity is, oh, I trained 5,000 people. No. You can, especially in the humanitarian sector, we should not lie to ourselves. Our work takes lots of time to, for the results to come out. You work with someone suffering um from domestic violence. You help her. She will leave the house today. You'll be happy. And then in four months, you hear that she's back in that house. So before you actually have, um, you know, there are actually evidences out there that victims of, victims of LGBT would most likely go back to their violence partner six times before leaving. So when do you start count? When do you start counting your sources? So for me, your sources is actually during that period, that work that you are doing with that one person, how they go, how they went back, and you help them come back, how they still went back again. You, in between that story, you will be able to demonstrate all the effort. That this is what I did. This is what I did. I remember one story that one 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 I one one work that I did on on female genital mutilation. It was even a family member, you know. And I had to call the police on a family member, like because she wanted to mutilate the child. It it was just one person. So you don't have to say you have done five thousand people. You have done twenty five thousand people. You have done ten people. I think your main story is in your process. This is what we did. This is how we did it. This is the outcome of what we did. And this is what we are going to do too. Thank you. Like this word you just said now strike me. Like you said, the success is in the story, the process. Because some people most time think it's by mm -hmm. hyping numbers. Just if I said it, just if it's one person, state it's one person, that will not prevent the scholarship from giving it to you. They want to see how you solve process. And I just like how you said that. But in terms of the example again, you know, some people volunteer again. 
they do health a lot of things together and you're yeah, applying for one particular course so do you think they should add the experience of like climate change missing it or just streamline your volunteering or experience to that particular course you want because that too also is a question well so this is the first thing with volunteering so there's volunteering because you just want to help and there's volunteering because you are interested in solving a problem. Generally, I used to advise people that um, they should align their volunteering process so that it can, it can be beneficial to them in the long run, okay? If you are telling a mental health story, okay, and you are saying, okay, my base, for me, my base, the base of my work is gender equality and under human rights that's the base of my work but i do access to education i work on no poverty i work on healthcare sometimes and everything is to facilitate gender equality okay that is the goal of my work some people do um there are many ecofeminists who do gender equality and climate change because there, there, there have been many research that shows that climate change affects men, women more than men, okay? So the first thing is that if you are volunteering, okay, because you're interested in certain issues, I feel like you should be very strategic in your volunteering. Like, this is, I like, climate change bothers me a lot. And I want to contribute to solving the problem of climate change, okay? So you find organizations and you, 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 you work in specific roles that will advance the growth, your own growth, and will also ensure that we find the, the solution to climate change. Now, generally, broadly, you don't put all your experiences into one application. Why? Because even in your CV, you, cannot, you don't submit the same CV for, for different job application. You only pick the ones that are um that are connected to the job that you're applying to, right? So I think that's the same way it works to with applications. You don't just put anything, you look strategically, like okay, this particular application, what job, um, this particular application, um, what volunteering experience do I have that is related to this application? And then you can just write it. That's what I think. That's my own personal opinion. All right, thank you. You can proceed. So um, the next question is, how do you see your career developing? Um, how, how do your proposed programs of study in Ireland help you support around the SDG um, priority in your country? So I think here you talk about how, when you complete the fellowship, what you want to do. Do you want to take on a global role? Do you want to take on, um, do you want to take on a global role or do you want to, um, have a small non-profit organization or you want to continue running your own non-profit organization this is a good place for us to talk about it tell us about what you want to do if you are establishing a non-profit organization tell us what the non-profit organization is going to do if you want to work about uh, working in a global role um talking about um the role that you aspire to work in it might not happen but just show show some confidence in yourself right have big dreams and then um, tell them how the skills um your knowledge and your masters is going to be beneficial to the role that you want to take okay and you know give examples that immediately when you come to nigeria or go back to your country these are the specific things that you um you would like to do okay so me i also spoke about how my dissertation is going to be used by civil societies, going to be used by governments, going to be used by me, going to be used by large civil societies, the UN and all that, to have solutions to the problem of um, gender inequality. So those are things that you can you can spice up and and there is no there is no I need to put this disclaimer out here now like there is no hard or fast truth to how to answer the question. This is how I answered my question, but I know that. Other fellows might not answer their questions this way. You just have to show some sense of confidence in yourself 
and like your own determination this is what i want to this is what i want for myself and speak from a place of knowledge from a place of authority like you know what is happening in that field you want to contribute to that field and you are very sure that your masters is going to help you con contribute to that field and then the third question was what are your key <laughs> achievements and leadership roles outside the workplace. You know, the first one was in the workplace. So this one too, I'm not going to go too much on this one because it's still the same style as you answered the first one, only that this time you are talking about all your volunteering experiences. So for me, for example, in the first place, I spoke about working with a non-profit. In this place, I spoke about my own experience establishing my own non-profit organization because it is outside of my paid workplace. Yeah, you can talk about your volunteering experiences, although this is not directly related to this one, but for my, I remember I read someone sharing application and in her leadership experience, she spoke about what she did in the church and she got sharing. So um, for year two, you can speak about the leadership roles you took anywhere, as long as you're impacting life and you're doing something that changed life. It's a leadership role in your church if you led donations to to go to an orphanage to to an orphanage to to give food, clothes, and people in orphanages. What was the outcome of that thing that you did? You know, if you did not give them that food and clothes, would they have food and clothes? Those are the questions that you are going to answer. So you you, you speak about oh you volunteered with so 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 this person. This was your role. Mention the specific role that you took, okay? And then, um, you know, talk about how you led, how many people you worked with. Always talk about how you worked with people, how many people you worked with. This was what you people did together. After doing it together, this was the outcome. Now, now show them the ripple effect of the work that you did. We donated. We, we carried out an advocacy on sexual and gender-based violence in Ifakwejai community. Because of this advocacy, community members, religious leaders, um, healthcare workers, mothers, fathers, everyone became aware of the use of sexual and gender-based violence in the community. And this led to a 2% two two decrease in sexual and gender-based violence in the community. So that's how I typically answer that, that kind of question. And I, I think that, you know, people can try answering it that way too. Yeah, now, it's, it's, it's really a good approach. Like, because most times people think that when you talk about religion, it's going to make them swap your scholarship. That's not true. Because even in development, you know, religious actors that are key stakeholders. But we're not saying she's not going to write like how you're organizing people for offering. You know, talk about using the church for social good, like the good work the church do, just like the example she gave. Are you donating, trying to organize for orphanage? So things like that is really, really useful. So is that the only question they asked for this second um the second stage. No, other questions i think okay. um what do you on what do you understand to be island development priorities what interests you about living and studying in ireland so one for the island development priorities you have to go and look at their um every year they release what they want to do the, the island um, releases their development priorities in every country human rights, education, you have to read specifically on that every year and then see how you can relate, how you, what you understand about it. Then what interests you about living and studying in Ireland? This is where you go all out for yourself. You want to study in Ireland because they have the best schools. This, is, this was my own answer, like, because they have the best schools in the world. I'm studying for the master's in equality studies, and it is just number one of its kind in Europe. We cannot find it anywhere. So, like that was very, very important. That was very, very important to me. I wrote that in my essay. I wrote about how, as a country, they are much more forward in terms of human rights than Nigeria. And I find that it's going to be a good country to learn about um human rights, how they have been able to ensure human rights um to the stage that they have in their country so i find it very important to live in ireland okay 
so I, I spoke about um things like this, you know, I spoke about the economy and that live that living in this country is going to give me an effects and experience, effects and opportunity to experience your um to experience the economy, to experience the culture, to experience the people, to experience the policies, to listen and engage with discussions so that I can um facilitate this kind of change in Nigeria. So, so that was basically an overview of how I answered that question. And then, you know, you can also talk about how you yourself you are beneficial to the, how you yourself you are beneficial to the economy, you know, like you visit places, meet people, make international friends, cook jollof rice if you like to cook, you know, anything that, that makes you happy. So how do you propose to develop personal and professional links with Ireland on, upon your return? So this question, there is actually you no know, one answer you get. And I, people find this question really hard. I would have really read it out, but I know how people can be. I don't want people like duplicating the question, but really, how do you want to develop personal and professional relationship? So let me share an example of myself. Since I since I got here, I've made friends with my professors. Like they're amazing people. I've made friends with a lot of them. They connect me with opportunities, opportunities that are important to my own career goals. And because my career is in human rights, it also affects, it also makes change to the growth of Nigeria as a country. Okay, so this is a professional growth for me. So meeting with your, um, exploring the works of your professors, you know, you can talk about the research that some of your professors have done that you find very exciting and that, oh, you want to, you, you would like to like meet with them, discuss um, this research and hopefully facilitate um, something like that. I remember I also uh, mentioned something about um, exchange exchange, although I have not been able to do it, but it's still something that I can still do in two years, in three years. So these are um, these are examples of cross-cultural cross um, cross um, and um, way of um, developing a personal and professional relationship in Ireland, okay? Meet people, it's still like meeting people, exploring opportunities, you know, all those kind of things. So that was my answer to the question okay and um state why you have chosen this program and how you meet so for every program that you choose you'll be asked to choose three programs in three schools for every program that you, you choose you have to state why you chose the program and how you meet the requirements which reference to your academic achievements and work experience so that's why i said it's the school that determines not not them so you have to tell them why you chose the the you have to explain three times so if you chose the masters in um for me i chose the masters in um, women's studies at university college cork masters in equality studies at university college dublin and then um, what else? I think I chose maybe May Note. My Mass MA in Gender Diversity and Inclusion at May Note University. So you have to talk about why you chose them, what makes what makes it unique, how you fit in. Do you have the required CGPA? If no, do you have the work experience that um backs it? If there's any professor that you see that you like, that you can just mentioned the professor that I chose it because I also like the work of so, so and so professor. They've worked on this research and I like it and I feel that this research, research is beneficial to my work and I also like to work with them. You mentioned some of the courses that you will take and how they are beneficial to your work, how they are beneficial to your career. And in Nigeria, because it's an human rights fellowship in Nigeria, how they are beneficial to human rights in Nigeria. So and then that's how I answered those three questions so those are the questions for the second stage okay yeah so in that second stage so is it when you are submitting the application in one form like that's why you write course one 
This is why I choose it. Oh, you have a proper form. Okay, so you finish one from the beginning to the end, one course you submit. Then you... No. Okay. There's a proper form with the application. There's an application pack, actually. Okay. So when they invite you to apply for stage two, they send that pack to you. Mm -hmm. I have only called out the question. So you fill in all these things into the application pack. Mm. And then you... Yeah. Okay, what if somebody... You know, some people like to like diversify when they're applying. Like you, all the courses you mentioned have something to do with equality. What if someone pick a first course, project management, second course, then public policy, and then third course, gender? With that kind of sign, signal a red flag to say, why is this person not just pick um, gender or true? Why is he do, trying to do project management here, public policy, gender? I think it will, regardless of whatever country that you are, you have to that you are applying from. You have to show, show a particular trajectory of work. So if you choose computer science in first school, choose gender equality in second school, choose project management, what exactly do even all your essays look like? I don't know because some people can be so funny. They're like, ah, I have interest here, here, and here. They don't know at least as far as <laughs> seriously. Even me, I will not take you seriously. Yeah, that's true. So, so that's stage two. Now, so after stage two, you send you send your you send your you send your application package to the embassy again. You send it with your transcript. It's online now. You send it with your transcript. Your your passport, your um, your certificate, yeah, yeah. I think those are the requirements. Then, hopefully, you are invited to interview. So now this is the this is where it becomes interesting. When you are invited to your interview, you have to have um, you have to have all your if your transcript was not ready, it has to be ready. If your um, school certificate was not ready, it has to be ready before your, before your interview. And also before your interview, you need um, two recommendation letters. They are going to give you about two to three weeks to get it. You have to... It has to be written on a letter ahead and they have to be academic recommendation letters. For me, because I do not want while well, I just travel down to my school, like I just I just wanted to get it done with. So you need recommendation letters. So you have to get all of them ready and submit it at a certain time. When you submit it, they will invite you to the interview and give you a date. So the interview, my interview was in December, sometimes in December. It's quite competitive. It's quite competitive wow. because you're interviewing with a lot of people. And then um, before they used to select just one person from Nigeria. Yeah. But luckily last year they selected three of us, three girls, and it was very competitive. You have to go all out and see everything. So for the interview, I don't remember much about the interview, but this is one thing I know. If you wrote your essays yourself and you are not scared you'd figure out your interview because your interview is basically them asking you the same thing that that you've written in your in your essay okay so they ask you about your leadership skills my interview was for 20 minutes so it was quite short but you know because we say more we can say a lot of things in one minute all the things that you're not able to say in your application you can say it Okay, you can give more scenarios when you're talking. So they asked me, I, I think that all they asked me again was practically about my application. Why why did you choose course you chose? Tell us about your leadership skills. Why do you want to go to UCD? Tell us this and tell us that. And so make your application relatable, make your interview relatable. Like talk about in Nigeria, it's a human rights fellowship. So for me, I, I, I spoke about key human rights issues that we have in Nigeria at that moment. The NSAS protests that just happened, 
you know, gender equality, gender equality issues, you know, domestic violence, such issues that are issues that we face on day to day. I spoke about how it affects me and the work that I, I do, okay? I spoke about how, how my master's is going to help me better provide solutions to this problem, okay? So that's what everyone should do too. So don't, don't go there and speak like a robot, really. Because if you are speaking like a robot, you go there and define what human rights is. Like human rights, is, is human rights is that. No, talk about like human rights in the context of your immediate community. In this community that I know, I know um, the government does not fund education in this community. I know that 12 girls do not go to school in this community, and that's because their parents think that, think that they don't deserve education, okay? And don't go and cram anything. Just do it from watch, speak from all the things that you've done. My interview, I didn't even prepare much because I was, I was quite ill. I just had a surgery. So I just, I literally just went to do my interview, but I aced it because if you wake me up anytime, any, any, anytime, any, any time of the day, I will tell you about what I'm doing, about my work. So that's really what the interview was all about. There's, there's no big deal. Once you, um, once you, you wrote your essay yourself, go through your essays again. Now look for additional scenarios of the work that you've done. Tie your work to to happening events around the world, how your work fits in. And then I feel like you are, I think you are good to go for the interview. So after the interview, um, before the interview, I did a Duolingo test because you, you have to, before people used to write IELTS, but during my they were accepting Duolingo because you, because IELTS centers were closed, things like that. And then schools here in Ireland were accepting Duolingo. Now, everyone is an English test, not necessarily, not just because of the embassy, but because when you're finally selected, you need the English test for your visa application. It's part of the visa application processes. So you have to write an English test. So if you have your IELTS, good. But if you don't, the embassy pays for people to write the IELTS. So basically, they refund when you write your IELTS. I know people will, will want to ask me that, what if you don't pass? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I passed, so and they refunded me way more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but you have to write your IELTS then. And um, the people um from last year, from this present court that are coming in August, those ones wrote Duolingo and they're writing IELTS. So for the dual, I remember the Duolingo, they gave me a code. They gave me a code. So I just used, I didn't even pay. I just used the codes to, so it's sort of like they've paid Duolingo already. So that's it. Then hopefully all, this, all these things that we're talking about from June to December, that's all the process. Now, God's willing, we are selected as the candidate for um, the Roger Kismet Fellowship, which is also the Irish Aid Fellowship. Congratulations. Like, you have done like 60% of the job in December. So from January to like March, there's going to be a very, very long silence. You're not hearing anything from the embassy. I just want to did they forget me? Have they forgotten me? Are they not talking to me? The da 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 any anything? But no, they have not forgotten you. They are just like trying to get things done a bit. And so, I think in April you are going to get a message. They are going to start talking to you from Ireland. They are going to add you over to ICOS in Ireland. So ICOS is International Student Council of Students. Yeah. So they manage we international students, all of us Irish fellows, the amazing people. So ICOS is going to guide you through applying for your schools. Although you chose three schools, you can only apply to two schools and then ICOS is going to pay for your application fee. All you need to do is to apply. So you have two schools. You are not allowed to go to your second school, except if you are rejected from your first school. 
So be very, very careful. Think very well when you're choosing your first, second, and third choice because you cannot change anymore. Except if you get a rejection. I cannot lie because even if you get a rejection email, you have to still send the rejection email to them. If you get so, you have to see, they have to see it. And then you apply to your schools. Um, and then by July, everyone is going to get responses from the school. I I got offers from both of my schools, UCC and then UCD. And I'm here at UCC at I'm here at um, UCD. And after that, the embassy, all the embassies are going to host different events for you. The embassy in Nigeria hosted events for us. We went to meet them and they help you with your visa process. Honestly, if anybody asks me how to apply for the island visa, I'm the worst person to ask because ours was practically a breeze. We just went to VFS, we submitted our things, and in a week it was out, which is not the experience of other people, you know, they are going to pay, they're going to, you are going to pay for the visa application, but they're going to refund you. So I don't think you're actually spending any money like that. The, the major money I spent was that I used to send documents from Lagos to Abuja. So I think that was what I spent. When I sent, I sent, okay, there was a time they asked us to send all our documents in in art copy. So that was when I spent money for DHL for them. But there's a lot of work. It's a very, very long process, almost a year back and forth, back and forth. But I think generally that's it. That's that's about it. And let me tell you about the fellowship itself. Okay. <laughs> don't talk about it. Like I don't know. I think it's it's an Irish thing. Like they're not allowed or anything. But I feel I feel like it's the best, it's the best scholarship out there. Hey, excuse me, wait, no, 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 not to go to everybody says that scholarship is the best. I understand. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not joking. I'm not because um our stipend is very good. I cannot share it, but our stipend is good. They pay us our stipend differently from our accommodation fee. Our accommodation is good, although Ireland is presently the most the most expensive. Um we have an accommodation crisis. So there's an amount that we, that they will pay you that is good enough for accommodation for. Yeah, and you yeah even in Dublin the capital, so you won't pay more. The capital is always expensive. <laughs> so and they are always organizing parties for us. Like almost every every two months, there's always a party that you just go, you dress up. People that are coming from other places, they book hotels. People who are not schooling in Dublin, they book hotels for them, food and all that. There's all these dreams. They organize free courses for us, so project management, and you become certified, communication, Irish language. Um, so like what year they organize like four. You can choose to attend or not. I don't know any other scholarships that is in things like that they do let me this is let me just allow you uh hype island this because this is your island time <laughs> i don't know any other scholarship like like it's just, it's just very we have um personal relationships with our they are very very helpful the um the body itself is very very helpful they don't need to be alone in nigeria just last week they came all the way from nigeria to visit us here are the embassy serious? Yeah, came. We went out for dinner mm -hmm. as much as you, you know. So we we get lots of support. You don't feel like you're alone. You don't feel the need to walk. You understand? Mm -hmm. You don't feel the need to walk. You, you are fully covered. There's always something. There's always something happening. And yeah, so it's 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 quite it's a great fellowship, and it's so lucky. So many people don't even know. I mean, know when I wanted to apply. I did not see anything online. I was looking for I was looking for fellows that where are these fellows? Where are they? Where are you people? I had to like search and search and search and did before I finally saw them. But it's really amazing. It's really amazing. It's a fully, fully, fully funded. When you get here, they'll give you 1,000 euro to buy whatever it is that you feel that you need. You can the money is your own. You can use it for anything, stipend. Um, you can use it for anything computer food whatever whatever you want clothes anything me i 
didn't I I had one plate from home. I I why will you carry one plate from home? You're adding weight to your bag, eh? I jacket from traveling. Okay, you just wore it, right? If you need to see me at the airport, they were just laughing at me. Ah, that is from... <laughs> it. And I, I'm going to a cold country. I tied it on my head. Okay. On my chest, on my but you know they cannot tell you that you are extra yeah. rude. Yeah. They just I entered. I tied it on my bag. The airport officials were just laughing at me. I said, it's my my clothes. I cannot leave this one here and come and buy another one. So even people who didn't have one clothes, like what do you want to use? What do you want to buy with one thousand euro? What are you buying? You know. So we. So if you don't have like a computer a phone or anything, anything that is going to help you um study better, you can get it with that money. They don't care how you spend it, it's yours. And so we 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 have lots of things. We have lots of support here. I school in UCD. UCD still has lots of support to to help you as a student studying the library. Our library is so beautiful. We have a writing center in the library where well, to help you with your grammar to help you look through your essay the structure if you are doing it rightly they are there to assist you the school is supportive in its own way you know it's just it's quite an amazing country to be yeah i can see you're having a good time like you're already pitching and i feel like i should come to ireland now and study <laughs> so are you it's learning not- the irish language Oh no, I'm very bad with languages, please. Uh, what about the food? What's the food like? Well, yeah, this food is mashed potatoes, and I, I actually like it. See? I even got <laughs> their favorite thing is they like mashed potatoes a lot. The food, of course, the food is different from the African cuisine. If you are coming from the African, and if you have because of the African pali, but I think you can always get everything you want. We also there are quite a number of Asian stores here where you can get African food. What African thing do I miss? Maybe a balumo. And they have that from time to time. I just haven't been able to. But generally with food, I see yam, I see they have eba for people like eba. There's semu for people like semu. There's okra, there's beef, there's um, um, pomo, there's meat. There's... All you need to do is just find it. Listen, so you have everything there already. That's good. Um, so you mean that um the documents you have to submit, you have to submit them physically. Like you say, that recommendation. What if someone has graduated like 10 years ago? So you still have to go back to your university. Uh, you, need to, you need two recommendation letters, self, two academic recommendations. So it must what? be academic, you can't use work experience. You can't use work experience. Uh, people that feel your lecturers, better go and set up. <laughs> and then that was why I went to school. Like I just went, you know. Luckily for me, I was quite popular in school, so I was able to. But I feel like if you go to school, even if you don't remember it, <laughs> they can still write like because your professors cannot remember everyone, it's not possible. But you need two academic recommendation letters. Okay. I, I don't think this scholarship is for PhD because someone is asking, um, no, so, uh-huh, so it's not relevant. Just do your master. And the one year master, right? Or is it two years? One year. One I year. think some some people have, it depends on your course. Mm-hmm. I think they pay you, they sponsor you for as long as your course takes. But it has to be a thought master's. All right. So any final words? I think you've done justice already. So I let you go. I think the final word is that uh, because me, I I graduated with a two two for undergrad. I'm always very particular about people who are below grades. People are always very skeptical about oh my grade was low in undergrad. I can't. I really did da 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 da. There's always a lot of that. I mean, so I was I was like that for a while, and I have even really been rejected many times because my grades were low. But I made up for that with my experience in the development in development work. I I more than made up for it. Like I'm very confident in my work, what I had done, and I knew that I had enough skills to 
to compete. I can't compete anywhere with anyone with whatever you have, a first class or whatever it is. And I know there are so many people like that so who feel like, especially when you now finally someone the courage to apply to one place and then they give you a rejection letter and you start feeling like, oh no, it's because I had this, I had that. And me, I got to, I got, I, I got to scholarships on the same day. They sent me their final offers on the same day, Chevlin. So it was like within three hours. So I feel like if it happens for me, it can happen for anyone, not just anyone, no, even if you have the first class or a two one, if you don't develop skills side by side in this very competitive um, world that we are in, you might not be able to move further with your degree. So if you feel like you've developed enough skills, some of these applications even write a body that they want for slash, they want to want, but we can never tell. Just 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 putting your best foot. I I I went to check. I think I'm actually the first person in this scholarship who has it to do that they would they would select who who, who, who would have thought that. and you know I, I spoke with another I remember one of the scholars that got it this year. She reached out to me and she was like, she's reaching out to me because she read, she read my story that I said I had this to do that. She applied for the same scholarship and she was rejected. And she thought that she was rejected because she had it. So I said, no, sir, let's practice together. You know, application was good. She was invited to interview and she was selected for this year. She was so, so excited. So regardless of your grades, and also what your experiences are. Some of us have really amazing experiences, but we think that it's not enough. We think that we have to save the world, that we have to have reached out to 5,000 people. We have to have, have supported 1 million women. We have to have traveled to so many countries. We have to have attended 1 million conferences before we are, before we are, um, we are fit for these scholarships. That's not true. All of us, our stories and journeys are different. And all you need to just do is to tell your story in an authentic way. Pumi, thank you so much. Like, you don't know how, how believe like I help this thing because I know someone who has a tutu. And I keep telling him, applying, it's like, no, because he has been rejected. It's like, nobody takes tutu for scholarship. I said it's a lie because even Chivinin, I know Chivinin can take a tutu if the university gives the offer, because I know someone with, even with an HND that has gotten children in. And but then I'm, I would have gone to University College of London. Imagine you haven't gone to a good school too. And then again, imagine you, this scholarship ideally would not take a 2-2, two -two, but it's hard to try. Like you put your best foot forward. So I'm going to like send you this video so it gets to here and see why you should try again to like apply. So irrespective of grades. Oh. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section, like and subscribe to this channel. For me, thank you so much. Thank you.